Hello friends, welcome on this cold winter morning and today we are going to discuss a very important topic called acquired B phenomenon. Uh, interesting because it is uh, it is a exam questions we seldom uh, see it on the bench uh, but at the same time it is a very important thing that one should know especially the postgraduates and the uh, transfusion medicine uh, uh, students who are going to write an exam. So I am going to talk about this interesting topic. Uh, before that, uh, there is a thing that we need to know about the chains that are important in the ABO system. So I call it the chain reaction. You can see there are type 1 and type 2 chains. Uh, type 1 chains, how why are they type 1 is because they have a beta 1, 3 linkage and the, the, the terminal uh, sugar, you can see there is between the terminal sugar galactose and the N-acetyl uh, glucosamine, there is a beta-1-3 linkage. They are mostly found in the plasma and secretion, whereas the type 2 chains are found on the RBC. So we are right now going to restrict ourselves on this chain, that is the type 2 chain, which are present on the RBCs. Now, interestingly, on type 2 chain, uh, the PUT1 enzyme will act and it will cause the addition of a fucose sugar and turn it into a H substance. So to remember it, type 2 chains put 1 gene, type 1 chain put 2 genes. So there is, I have explained this explicitly in my earlier uh, session on ABO synthesis. If you want, you can go through that. If you already know it, then it's uh, good. But just to uh, appraise you about the thing, how this H activity happens in these type 2 chains. So this is very important for ABO synthesis because on these precursor chain, the type 2 chain where you, you can, why they are type 2 is because you have a beta 1, 4 linkage here. So whenever this uh, person who has at least one capital H or gene, he's H allele, he's going to produce a put 1 gene that is fucosyl transferase 1 that is going to eventually act on these type 2 chain and add a fucose sugar on these precursor chain. This fucose chain when added, it gives a H antigen. So the central dogma around ABO is there is a gene. So this is the gene. It will produce an enzyme that is this enzyme fucosyl transferase 1 and this enzyme is eventually going to add a sugar called fucose on the terminal galactose. This is H activity or the H antigen that is formed. Now, once we have the H antigen and only and only when we have the H antigen is the person of A antigen will have an A transferase. A, a transferase enzyme is going to add N-acetyl galactosamine to the terminal galactose provided the H antigen is formed. Similarly, if you are a B antigen uh, person or a B group, then you will have a B transferase and a galactose will be added on the terminal galactose provided H antigen has already been formed. And if you are a blood group O, then obviously you don't add it because uh, there is no transferase there. So how is acquired B formed? So acquired B phenomena, it is an in vivo, vivo phenomena. It happens with patients with bacterial infection, often patients of colon cancer or rectum and this is like a false B like antigen. So it happens on individuals who are A group and they may behave like a B group. So how this happens is, so we go back to the biochemistry part of it. You can see that the A antigen, how do we identify an A antigen? The terminal galactose, there is a sugar that is attached that is N-acetyl galactosamine. Whereas in blood group B, the terminal sugar is galactose. So that is how A antigen differs from B antigen. So, but what happens when these bacterial infection uh, play, play their part? They release an enzyme called D-acetylase. So what happens is D-acetylase, it, it actually cuts this acetylase part, acetyl part of this N-acetyl galactosamine. So when this is gone, it behaves or the, the antisera perceive it as a blood group B because it is looking like blood group B. So what happens is this, this part is chipped off because of the enzymes and it looks like a blood group B antigen. So the mechanism to explain it further, it is the bacteria that produces the d enzyme, which chemically alters the terminal sugar of the A antigen. So person has to be an A group, 
having n acetyl d galactosamine this sugar and this is chipped off the acetyl part and this looks like d galactosamine which is similar to galactose of blood group b now because the terminal sugar of b antigen is galactose anti b sera will cross react with the b like d galactosamine antigen therefore in vivo only group a people can have an acquired b like antigen so this condition is transient as long as the bacteria is producing that enzyme this is going to happen and it disappears when the infection is cured there is another mechanism which has been postulated and this explains uh, when the bacteria uh, the b like antigen if the bacteria is contaminating the blood specimens so here the membranes of some bacteria have determinants which are chemically similar to the b antigen in this case anti b anti sera is usually reacting with the bacterial antigens which have been attached to the red cells so in vitro both group o and group a cell can have this acquired b like antigen this is even more rarer than the acquired b phenomena which has happened because of the colon cancer or where the deacetylase enzyme is produced by the bacteria so how do we resolve it very important is if you check the historic blood group generally it is a a group we are all aware uh, that sometimes a person may complain that okay my group was a and why you are giving me uh, a thing like b so that is when you check the history the history is very impo important more often than not the patient will elicit a history of cancer of colon or rectum because that is where the enzymes are going to it is going to alter the bacterial flora and fauna and that is where the enzyme will produce the deacetylase enzyme so the other way to do is to test the red cell with the anti b reagent acidified to ph 6 you can also go for an auto control autologous control and this should give a negative result with your own cell interestingly you can what you can do is you can the the acetic acetic part or the acetate group that has gone you can recreate that acetic group when you uh, add an acetic anhydride you treat it with acetic anhydride and so the red cells start behaving like an a antigen again other thing is uh, why this b acquired uh, phenomena you know acquired b phenomena was uh, ca that came into being was because lot of uh, anti sera that were used at one point were of the same clone called es4 clone and that is the clone that was actually you know picking up this acquired b which otherwise we don't want the anti sera to pick so so once that clone was changed it became better and that is how we you know we we should see the lot and if we are using the same clone other thing you can do is try the secretor status study which is usually not necessary but if the patient is group a and a secretor he will secrete a and h antigens only in the secretions so what is the implication in the blood transfusion group a people if they have this acquired b antigen you should receive group a washed red cells the red cells should be washed to remove all traces of donor anti b which can react with the patient's b like antigen so this is all about acquired b phenomena if you have any doubts or anything you want to discuss regarding this you are free to write in the comments and we'll be happy to answer you back thank you so much